Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here or if this is the first video you've seen of mine, I would love if you would consider subscribing to my channel so that you can be up to date with all things Cricut and all things crafting. Today's tutorial is a fun one and it has been in the works for several months now. I really wanted to play with the engraving tool to see how I could use it and really overcome some of the pain points that I've seen out on the internet. So most of the pain points come from not being able to find fonts that are completely filled in. While I still haven't perfected the engraving tool, I've gotten pretty far and I'm really excited about the results. So I can't wait to show you what I've come up with. For this tutorial, you'll need a few things, but I wanted to call out that this tutorial is specifically for Cricut Maker machine owners, or if you're planning on investing in a Cricut Maker, then this is the tutorial for you. This tutorial will only work with the Maker because it uses the adaptive tool system and the engraving tip. So right here, I have the quick swap housing, which is the housing that you use with a scoring wheel. It's not the same as your rotary blade housing. So it has a little plunger on the top, whereas your rotary is just flat. So you can click the plunger right at the top and you can snap those apart and then put them back together and latch them back. So quick swap housing with the engraving tip. Of course, like always, I will put all of the links in the description below so you know what to buy and what not to buy. So we'll be using our maker and our engraving tool. You'll need a strong grip mat. It's important to have a strong grip purple mat because you need it to be super strong. It will be holding in our acrylic blanks. So these acrylic blanks, I cut on my Glowforge laser cutter, but you can purchase these online, whatever size that you'd like. So if you have a laser, you can cut your own acrylic. And I am using thick acrylic for Cricut standards. I actually am using thicker than what they recommend, but I'll get my calipers out and we'll measure how thick this is. You'll also need some masking tape or painter's tape. We'll be taping our blank down to our strong grip mat. And then I also recommend a lint roller because when you're engraving, a lot of dust will be made. And I just like to kind of brush that off with a lint roller. We'll stick it off with a lint roller so that it doesn't go everywhere. So that's all you need for this tutorial and your computer or device. I recommend using a laptop computer for this device because we will be using Silhouette Studios software. So if you have no idea how to use that, don't worry, I will walk you through everything you need to know. So let's grab our computers and get started. To get started, we are going to be using Silhouette Studio. And like I mentioned, this is a Cricut tutorial, but we will be using Silhouette Studio. So if you don't already have Silhouette Studio downloaded on your computer, that is okay. In this video's description, I will put a link to where you can download Silhouette Studio. There is a free version, and then there's also a paid version. You will need the business edition to do the tutorial that I'm showing you today, or you can just download this file that I'm going to create in Silhouette Studio from my blog. So I will also link to that. So Silhouette Studio has pretty similar functionality to Cricut Design Space. It just has more tools. So when you open it up, you'll see that it looks very similar. There's a text tool, there's a line tools. So play around and see what you can figure out on your own or try to follow along and see what I do and see if you can replicate that because after a little bit of time, you will be a pro. So we're gonna start by clicking on the text tool on the left-hand side. And I'm just going to write out, I just want to prick it all of the things because who doesn't want to click at all of the things? So we are going to justify this in the center and then we're just going to pick a font. I like narrow fonts and we can adjust all of the line and letter spacing um, as well. So here's my little phrase that I want to put on here. And before we get too far in, I'm going to increase the thickness of this font. I'm not sure if there's a bold option. Let's see if there's a bold option first. Okay, there's a bold option. So I want it to be a little bolder and that looks great. That looks really thick. If we want it to be even thicker, Silhouette does have an offset option. Over on the right-hand side, you can click offset and then you can toggle your distance about how far you want your offset. So we'll make ours a little bit thicker. I don't want them to overlap though. Oops.
So you can see that the A and the N are overlapping right now, and I could move them apart. So I will do that after I offset this. We'll zoom in a little bit to see what's going on. Okay, perfect. So after that is good to go, um, it's already applied. So we're gonna select everything. And then over on the right hand side, there's a modify panel. There's also a panel at the top. I'm just going to click weld so that all my letters, oops, I missed the C, all the letters just weld together. So I don't have those double lines. Again, you do not need to do this. This file is already built on my blog. So if you just want the file, you can head over there and grab that from the blog. So then now I can be a little bit fussy and adjust all the different letter spacings and kerning so that if like things are overlapping a little bit too much to my liking, this is all personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So you can use the align tools and space them equally, or you can space them to how you personally like them to look. So I just kind of adjust until I feel like everything is spaced out properly. And you can fiddle along around with this for as long as you want. So after I have everything spaced, I come over and I just group my different lines together. I right click and hit group or the hotkeys on your computer are great too. You can, if you're on a Mac, command G on a PC, control G. So you'll just see things that you like and don't like and you can quickly modify them. So I'm just going to separate everything into lines. After I'm done spacing everything out, I'm just gonna drop in a little heart file at the bottom so that it's kind of like a period. So I have my heart and I'm just going to resize that to be a little baby heart at the end of my phrase. And then I can use the align tools over on the right and align them down at the bottom. So if you find this tutorial helpful and you want to see more Silhouette Studio designing tutorials, let me know because if this is helpful, I would love to continue to do these tutorials, but I'm not sure where you guys are at. If you think they're helpful, if you don't think they're helpful, I'd love to hear what you think. And I just want to make sure that you can see this little line there. Okay, so I have my phrase and now I'm going to fuss around a little bit more with the spacing. So I want them to be all squished together a lot closer. So I'm just gonna bring the top and the bottom down, highlight everything, align it center, and then space it out vertically. So it's getting better. I still want it tighter than that. So we'll just keep on repeating the process until you're happy with your spacing. So this is the fun part of design um, where you kind of get to fuss and really make your own decisions and make something that nobody else has. So nobody else has this little phrase designed in the font in the way that I have it. Well, unless you, unless you decide to download it from the blog, but I get to make all the creative decisions and that's one of my favorite parts about Cricut. So here I do notice that um, the E is a little close, so I'm just gonna scoot that out and group that back together and then align those all center again. So once I'm happy with this part, I'm gonna group everything together and I know the size that I'm engraving on already. So I'm gonna draw some templates. So I have a circle that is three and a half inches. And so I'm just gonna guesstimate there and then come up to the top and increase that to three and a half by three and a half. And then I have a little keychain, and that one's only two inches. So we'll just do the same thing and come up to the top and make that two by two. So the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm going to add fill lines inside, and I just wanna have a good idea of how dense my lines will look. So just like you would in your Cricut um, software, I'm just going to resize this to be how big I want it to be on my coaster. So this is my coaster blank that I'm working on first. And then once you have it, you can use the align tools again and center everything. So you can get, kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Now, if I uploaded this to Design Space right now, Cricut would only engrave this outline, the red. And I want it to engrave everything so it's nice and filled in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this line fill. So the line effects panel, and it's going to make a fill. So I can just click on any lines and you can play around with all of the different looks. And then we're going to increase or decrease the spacing rather until it's super dense. Now this is overkill, but 
I always am a little overkill when I'm doing my crafts. If I'm going to spend 30 minutes engraving this, I want it to be really, really dense. So if we come in here and we look at how close those lines are, they're really close together and that's exactly what I want. So if you want to save some time, you can adjust these and have them further apart. So it's all just a personal preference. We're gonna be completely extra today and we're gonna engrave it really dense so you can see just how great it looks. So I'm going to release the effects and that will tell my software to save all of these different lines. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, the right click and I'm gonna say, make a compound path. Making a compound path will save some space in your file for um, Cricut Design Space. If this all sounds like gibberish, don't worry. Again, you can download the file from my blog and you can skip all of this all together. So we're going to make a compound path. And then we can delete the circles at this point. You do not need these circles. So if you want to delete those, go ahead and delete those out. And we'll have these ready to go. So we're gonna bring these into design space now. So we're gonna say file, save as, and then up here at the top, we're going to say save to hard drive. This will save it to our computer so we can use it in Cricut design space. Um, Cricut things, we'll call it that. And we don't want to save it as a Silhouette Studio file. We actually want to save it as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. So click OK. And now that will save it to wherever you put it. I put mine on my desktop. So I'm going to open up Cricut Design Space. And from the home page, you'll be on this page. We're going to click on New Project and then come over to the left-hand side and choose Upload. We'll upload the image by clicking on Upload Image. We're gonna browse, and we're gonna say we want the Cricut Things, and we're gonna open that up. You'll see that our file is here, and it looks like it's filled completely, but we know there are actually little lines, so we'll click Save, and then we'll drop this into Design Space. Now, both of these images came in, and again, you'll see that they look like they're completely filled. You'll notice that they came in and they were smaller than what we designed them to be. So if I go back over to Silhouette Studio and I highlight this, I can actually see what the true dimensions should be. Let's see, right here, 2.579 by 5.31. So I will put that in the notes that the SVG should come in at that, those dimensions. So let's just select both and do the width, 5.31. And then you'll see that since those are locked, it comes in at the correct size. So we can even test that and make sure that the circle, when we do a three and a half inch circle, like our coaster, that it fits in correctly. So you can see that those are nice and sized correctly. We're gonna ungroup these because we're gonna do one at a time just to make sure that everything looks good. So I'm gonna hide this little one and we're gonna start with our big coaster. We do not need the circle, so you can delete that. And then we're going to make sure that this is turned to engrave. So if you have a maker, make sure that your machine mode is set to maker and then set it to engrave. And then we'll click make it. From this page, you are going to drag your image to the center of your mat and you can use the zoom tools. So you'll use the six as a reference to where the center is. And you'll use a six here for a reference on that side. So we know that the cricket is in the middle and then we can kind of just eyeball it where we want to place it. We are going to mirror it because I'm going to have my engrave on the underside of my coaster. So if you want your engrave on the top, you do not need to mirror it. But if you want to follow this tutorial exactly, you'll go ahead and mirror it at this step and then click continue. We're going to set our material. So you'll see that the populars and our favorites, you can favorite materials. Since I don't see what I'm looking for, I'm gonna choose browse all materials. We're using acrylic, so we'll just search that. Acrylic and choose acrylic, the thick option, and then click done. And now we are going to load our tools in and load it on the mat and get started. So once everything is set in design space, we are going to load our blank onto our purple strong grip mat. 
And it's really important that you're using a clean, strong grip, grip mat that is super sticky. So this is really sticky. We're also gonna tape it in place. So the blank that I'm using is an acrylic blank and it has masking on both sides. I cut it on my Glowforge, which is a laser cutter. But if you do not have a laser cutter, you can buy these online. So I will link to a couple of retailers and I'll also link to the Glowforge because having a laser in your house is also amazing. So we're gonna put this similar to where we put it on our preview screen. So you're just gonna line it up in the center of the six by six lines. And I just took the masking tape off one side of my blank. And if you buy them online, usually they come with masking tape on them too. So you'll just place it as best as you can in the center. And I, again, there's no tape on this side, but there is tape on the back still. And that is to prevent your material from getting scratched. So then I'm gonna grab some tape and I'm gonna tape all four sides of my blank. On the machine side, we are going to load in our engraving tip and that is tip number 41. And I have a quick swap housing. Again, I'll link to all these products and to switch out the housings, this is the same housing as a scoring wheel. It is different than your rotary blade. And to swap them, you just click this little plunger at the top and you can release it. And then to line it back up, you're holding down the plunger still and then let go and it's latched in. So we'll load this into our machine. And you'll wanna make sure it's all the way seated and close that in. And then I also moved my star wheels. So my star wheels slide like this. And so I just moved both of them, two on this side and two on this side. And then we will load our mat into our machine. And this part, you'll wanna make sure that your mat is as centered as possible. So you'll look at the gaps on each side and make sure that they are equal. Be a little bit fussy here and then click the load button. Once you're ready, click the flashing C. Your blade will detect to make sure you have the right tip in it, and then it'll start engraving. Now remember, this will take a long time because we filled in the lines on our design super tight. So I do walk away from my machine. I just make sure that my device is turned on do not sleep so that my device doesn't fall asleep. And then I walk away from my machine or sit in my craft room working on other crafts while this just kind of does its thing for the next several minutes. Occasionally the tool will lift and spin to redistribute all of the oils in the tools. So don't worry about that, that's completely normal. Once your engrave is done, I like to take a lint roller and just kind of roll off all of the dust and debris. You can peel off the tape from your mat. And then you can flip your mat over and pop off your blank. So on the front, you may be able to see that there are not consistent lines and we designed our file so that the lines were all the way consistent. So I'm gonna peel off the backer so you can see what I'm talking about. But overall, I am so impressed with how it engraves. So here you can see just how clean this engraves and I'm holding it against black paper so you can see it a little bit better. But you can kind of see the imperfections of where the lines are just not as consistent as our actual design. So I think if we spread the lines out to be further apart from each other, we wouldn't have that issue. But those lines do not bug me. And if they did, you can paint over your engrave and then wipe it off so that you can hide those imperfections a little bit better. But overall, I'm super happy with it. All right, since I'm kind of a perfectionist, I did go ahead and recut my little keychain and I tried some new things so I could get rid of those little lines. So again, the little lines are just in between the letters and they're so small and insignificant, but I just wanted to see if I could figure out a way to get rid of them so that when you go to do this project, you don't have those lines. So while I was engraving this one, 
I kept on blowing away the debris like that in the machine. And I honestly don't think it helped. So there's still the lines, again, very, very small. They're in different places now, but they're ever so slight. And so I emailed Cricut and I told them what was going on because I think whenever the tool lifts and spins, there's a slight little variation in movement. And I think that's what's causing it. So I emailed them and they told me they would look into it. I sent them my file. So if those lines bug you, maybe wait until we hear back from Cricut about what's going on with that tool spinning and possibly affecting the spacing, which is resulting in those gaps. So again, if that doesn't bug you, it doesn't bug me enough to where I wouldn't make these projects. I love this keychain. It's going on my keys immediately. And I just added some little jump rings and a keychain key on there. So I love it. I just want to make sure that you have realistic expectations of what's going on. So I wanted to grab my digital calipers so we could see how thin or thick this material was. So I've just closed it up and calibrated it. So let's get really tight and calibrate it to zero. And then we're gonna take our blank and just shove it in there. And so this is 0.1 of an of a inch. So it is 2.7 millimeters, 2.69, depending on how tight I'm squeezing it, 2.68. Not sure if you can see that, but 2.68 millimeters. So the thickest Cricut recommends is two millimeters. So again, this one's 2.7. So again, this is thicker than what Cricut recommends, but you saw that it does fit under there. It just is really tight. So again, please do this knowing that Cricut does not recommend this um, and make sure that you're just aware of all the risk involved. I have engraved several of these blanks and nothing has gone wrong with my machine, but all machines are different. So just keep that in mind. I also did try to paint the back of this because I wanted to see if I could fill in those gaps. And you absolutely can. I can just take white paint and fill those in. It just was super time consuming and I wanted to make sure again that you had those realis realistic expectations of what the final project would look like if you use my file as is. And I went in and inspected my file to make sure that it wasn't the file that I was using and there are no gaps on that file. So I'm interested to see if you try it out, what you think and how it engraves. But again, I think the keychain might be even more of my favorite than the coaster because now I can put this on my keychain and remind myself of all the things I can cricket. So again, really happy with how these turned out and I hope you try it and let me know what you think. I wanted to close this video with a few last minute thoughts. So like I mentioned, I did reach out to Cricut about the issue with the gaps and it does look like every time the tool lifts and spins, it's coming back down in a ever so slightly different location. So it doesn't bug me a ton. Overall, I'm super excited about the project, but I wanted Cricut to be aware of that issue. So hopefully they can resolve it so that when we make these projects, we don't have those inconsistencies. I also know it's not the file because when I recut it, the gaps were in different locations. So the tool would come down and spin and then there would be a gap. So after watching it, I think that's what's going on. So again, they're gonna look into that and get back to us. And if I need to edit my video or post a new one, I will do that. Not a big deal. I just wanted you to have realistic expectations of what your project will look like because when you spend over an hour engraving, you want it to be perfect. So that's that and I'll keep you updated there. In terms of all the products I used in this video, as always, they are in the description below. If you're interested in a laser or calipers or coaster blanks, everything's listed for you. So I hope you take a look at those. By clicking and shopping through those links, I may earn a small commission and that's what supports this channel. So I thank you in advance for using those links. And if you have any questions about this project specifically, please leave them in the comments below so I can get those answered and help you all out with your questions. Or if you're looking for more support, I would love to have you in my Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall Facebook group. I will also put that in the, the description below. So if you have any questions, let me know. Let's talk about blowing off the dust because originally I thought maybe that the gaps were being caused because I had left my machine unattended and there was too much debris that was building up. But I babysat my machine the entire time and was blowing off the debris. And even when I was blowing off the debris, I was still getting that same issue. So 
I don't think that's the issue, but again, we'll look into that. Cricut will look into it and hopefully we'll have an answer soon. So thanks so much for tuning in. You'll have to let me know what you think and if you have tried engraving yourself. All right, I'll see you in the next video.